Hi, this is uh, Bob from Hubby Concepts, and today I have a first peek on a brand new radio from FlySky, the PL18EV, the evolution of the 18-channel radio from FlySky, designed specifically for ground vehicles. Bulldozers, excavators, trucks, tanks, ships, tugboats. This radio is, is not designed for airplanes. It's designed for the stuff that we do. And I'll tell you what, it's amazing. In fact, I had to put a tie on. I felt like I needed to dress up just to be in the presence of this thing. It's, it is unbelievably good. Now, as we get into this video, you might find it a little choppy with a little bit of repeats because I kept shooting segments and then I'd have to reshoot them because I found more features. There's no English manual for it yet, so I just kind of discovered this on my own. But I'll tell you what, this thing is cool. Watch this entire video. It's really really exciting. Let's get started. So whatever I said in the opening uh, little segment that I did, here it is. Now I haven't even opened this yet so I don't know if I like it or not but just judging by the picture I'm gonna like it. I'm gonna go through this, I'm gonna unbox it, we're gonna go through all the details on it. This is a video I think you're gonna watch every minute of. So what did a uh, fly sky send me? First off I've got the Paladin EV radio. EV for evolution. I guess the evolution of their uh, Paladin radio. Construction vehicle professional edition. Finally, a radio that is designed for trucks, construction equipment, scale boats, tanks, all the stuff that we play with, not airplanes. And I am so excited to open it up. They sent me the radio. Uh, I've got a couple of 8-channel uh, receivers, which will be good. I can test to see if you can buy multiple receivers. I've got a, uh, looks like a 12-channel receiver. Yeah, 12-channel, very small, um, very nice. I've got a, uh, a harness. Wow, the machine works unbelievably good on this. I don't know how good you can see it on the video, but boy, is it nice. Little Fly Sky logo embossed in it. And they call this a pallet. I call it a tray, but it looks like a custom radio tray with armrests and neck strap holders. But we'll get to that later. We'll get to all these options later. But let's take a look inside the box here. So, all new box, and let's skip this stuff in uh, quick start guide. Uh, as of the time of me getting this, they do not have an English language manual yet. So this is a, a pre-production uh, radio, but I'm sure it's close to the production version. Nicely packed. Oh boy. I like the feel of this. Okay, so here, first glance, it's heavy. The case is all metal and, well, rubber grips here. And it is beautiful. Uh, some little inlays here. Feels really substantial. Um, dual power buttons. I can see right now it's got a stand, so you can set it down and stand it up. That's nice. This is a touch screen. We're going to turn it on a little bit and go through it. Um, all right, we have proportional channels here. These are super nice, and you can operate them from the back or the front. And for a uh, excavator, you know, where you're using these controls for your your uh, excavator machine um, control, then you've got say your track controls here. Very nice. All right, these sticks also rotate. Oh my word, how cool is that? So there's probably another channel there and there. The stick feel is awesome. Notice that it comes already with centering sticks. Now that I have the radio unboxed, let's take a, a quick look at some of the features. Um, first off, you press both power buttons down to power it up and you press them both to power it down. 
uh, brings up a nice uh, display screen with a construction vehicle in it. That's kind of nice. Um, there's a blue LED here under the display, and then there's LEDs in the sticks that illuminate them. Now, just playing with it, I've discovered that if you let it sit for a while, the LEDs start to change color, and then if you move a stick, it goes back to blue. It, it, you know, it looks kind of nice. It'd be nice if it was a selectable. I don't know that it is. I want to talk about uh, the battery and the charging. So this uses a single cell uh, LiPo battery that's built in. And I've heard it has a battery life of about eight hours. Charging is wonderful. It, it comes with a charge cord that's a USB, which is awesome because now I can charge it in my car. Uh, it just plugs into the unit. And we'll plug it into a USB port here. I'm going to power it off, actually. And the reason for that, I want to show you the display. So when it's, when it's plugged in, you get a battery display. And just like a cell phone. And the display goes out. Anytime you want to see your battery state, you just touch the screen. Now here, of course, the battery is completely full because I already charged it. But it'll show, just like a cell phone, uh, the battery level with a little charging symbol in it. So that's kind of nice. Now here's something that's really cool. I don't believe it's going to come with the radio. I'm not sure what is going to come with the radio, but this is a wireless charging stand. It also plugs into a USB. And you just set the radio on it, and it charges. That's it. Plus it makes a beautiful display. This radio is so good looking. There's our, our charge thing coming on. Um, how cool is that? You just set it down, it charges. That's, that's really slick. If it doesn't come with the radio, it's going to be available as an option. So that's um, some of the charging features. I'm going to zoom in on the radio and we'll look at some of the controls. So here we have the radio powered up and, uh, and ready to go. I've got my coffee cup here and I'm going to take a few minutes and go through this because uh, it is incredible. Now, I have shot this piece of video probably three or four times because every time I do, I find some new feature. But let's take a look at the, at the hardware first. So, beautiful aluminum, heavy case, very nice, lots of controls. Okay, so we've got our joystick here and here, here and here, and then we have another proportional function here and here. Um, we have trim switches that are... A, selectable so you can select which trim switch you want to be on which channel you've got two proportional controls here these use really a nice aluminum arm that you can operate from the back or the front so on an excavator say track controls um, either direction very nice three rotating knobs fully proportional with a beep in the center point which is really nice if you're trying to do it by touch You've got a push button on off on each side. You've got a three position switch here and here with a center off that, that are momentary. You've got a three position switch here that stays where you put it. A two position switch that stays where you put it. A three position switch that's center. And a three position switch that's center. So you can assign basically any channel to any switch or function. Uh, the nice thing about this radio with, with 20 mixes and all those channels, um, you can kind of set up switch configuration any way you want. Now if we touch the model, for example, we'll go to the model. Let's go back to model number one here. Okay, so you can get into the menu two different ways. One, you can touch the model or two, you can touch the menu and then go to the model. A couple ways to get there. The sensor menu up here, if a receiver's plugged in, it'll show the voltage. And over here we show uh, several of our, of our main channels, including um, the, uh, the motion bar, so you can see what's going on. Now you can, you can customize this main screen. You can also lock the main screen so that you can't 
do something by accident while you're running a model and then if you press and hold the lock button you can unlock it. If you want to look at the channels you can touch the channels but let's let's start with the menu. We already saw in the charging how it shows the charging bar but the menu is very simple and kind of reminds me of a cell phone. So display servos. Now that is a pretty straightforward thing that I call the monitor. And it shows every channel and shows what's happening with the stick on that channel. You can change the names, you can change the channels um, pretty simply, but the monitor is a great function for seeing what the radio is doing. Function assign. Here you can take whatever function and assign the channel. So you can see this radio preset from the factory shows the left track on channel 3. And I'll show you how to figure out what those are and what trim switch is on it. Models. This is where we select our models. So we can select our, the model we want. We can name it. Cool thing about naming it, keyboard. No more trying to scroll. You can actually type in the model name. That's really <laughs> very nice. Model structure. This is really cool. I, I don't re remember seeing anything like this on any other radio, but you can select different structures to be in your model and you can name them. So they've got some here that are pre-done. Sound effects, one, two, three, lamps, voice, manipulator, arm, hydraulic pump, gearbox, right and left track. Um, it's easy to name them or to turn them on and off so you can get your um, model set up but it, it makes it real easy and I'll, I'll go into more about that uh, in future videos. So custom main menu here's where you can select what you want to be on your main menu. Okay, uh, Receiver setup here is where you set up your receiver so you can bind with the receiver you can set fail-safe protocols so if your signal goes away your model does a pre-programmed thing. Um, typically you would just want everything to stop and uh, you can set up the different types of um, protocols. IBUS setup, which is really important if you're using a system like a Bayer um, sound system. Low voltage alarms, etc., etc. Um, all right there, easy to access. Sensors. Um, you've got display sensors, so right now it's a transmitter voltage. When the receiver's plugged in, you'll have the receiver voltage. I'm assuming there's additional sensors you can get. Reverse, this is servo reversing. It's as simple as clicking a button or unclicking it. Now the nice thing about this radio is as soon as you do something, it's saved. You don't have to save anything or do anything. So if you're playing with a model and you want to test it, I mean, you, you touch it, test it, it's ready to go. Endpoints, here's all our endpoints. So here's an example of endpoints. And you can use the plus or the minus to set the endpoints, a little bar moves here, tells you the percentage. Um, very simple to uh, to set endpoints. These are great for setting up things like transmission shifting. Uh, sub trim. I try not to use sub trim too often, but if you've got something that won't quite center, you can. I try to adjust it mechanically, but electronically you can you can adjust the center of any channel. Conditions. This is, I guess it would be called flight modes. Um, I actually like conditions better because for equipment and trucks, we're not talking about flight modes. So I have condition one is move mode and condition two is work mode. Now that is set up so that you could say have a, a move mode where you could drive your excavator with one stick and then switch it immediately over to work mode where now the stick does something else like moves the arm. Um, trims, these are our trim buttons, and that's where you can assign the trim button to a certain channel. Got another page here. Dual rates. So dual rates, I use dual rates a lot. Um, to me, MFCs practically require them. And the dual rate just shows you a, a screen right here. You can um, set the rate up or down, and you can assign it to any switch. Okay, there I set up a little simple dual rate and assigned it to this switch. So I've got 75% and 100%. And you guys that run Tamiya MFCs will know that's how you activate the extra functions. And I will, 
I will do a programming video on this radio with the Tamiya MFC. And since it has so many mixes, I can do custom things that I could never do before, like activate the horn with a switch instead of having to move a whole toggle. Very cool. Uh, channel offset, you can offset the center points. Uh, mixes, oh, see, channel delay, let's hit that one. That one you can delay the operation of a channel. Now, typically, in an airplane, they would use that for maybe bringing up the landing gear slowly or closing the gear doors slowly. Um, on a model, we might set delays to make it operate more realistically, like maybe a rudder delay on a boat so it steers more like the real thing. And you can set up a delay on any channel. Uh, mixes, here's all our linear mixes. There's 20 of them. Yay, 20 mixes. That's amazing. Um, enough mixes to pretty much do anything you want. And I'll show you a little bit, uh, a couple tricky mixes on my bulldozer. Uh, track mixing. Okay, here is where you can actually, if you don't want to do a linear mix and you want to do a little simpler mix, you can mix a left and right track for joystick control. And it's right there on the screen. Now, interesting point, that's a tank right there. So, right now, the only icon on the main screen is that excavator truck thing. But I'm assuming that we're going to see a tank and a, a ship or something in the future. But uh, that's that, that gives me great hope. This is, by the way, fantastic tank radio. Uh, okay, timers. You can set up and down timers. You can display those on the main screen. Logic switches. I haven't figured that one out yet. Remember, there's no manual for it yet, but uh, we'll look into that in the future. RF setup, uh, transmit, and you can, you can operate this radio without transmitting, which is kind of a nice feature if you want to set it up and not have a chance of operating a model. System. Here's our just our basically system stuff, the language, the units, the sound, the vibration. You can set it to vibrate when the batteries are low. Backlight timeout, backlight brightness. Everything is very easy to set with an up and down and a percentage. Um, switches set up, calibration, factory reset, firmware update. The firmware update, there's... At the time I'm shooting this video, this radio hasn't been announced yet, so there's nothing on the website. But later, they will, I'm sure, have a, a area for this radio where you can go and do firmware updates. You just plug it into your computer. I've done them on my, my, uh, my standard PL-18, and they're very easy to do. Keeps you up to date with all the latest um, software changes. Help Center. You can scan this, and it puts the... Uh, the quick start guide right on your phone. I'm assuming in the future that when they do have an English manual, it'll put the whole manual on your phone. Frankly, the radio is so intuitive that a manual is just not that big of a deal. So uh, there you go. That's that's a quick tour through the screens, a quick tour of the controls. Um, I'm going to hook it up to a bulldozer and show you that. I'll probably do a little other programming and show you that, and then we'll uh, we'll get out of here. But this this is a great preview of this radio, and so far, I'm very impressed. So you're saying, uh, wow, that looks pretty complicated. How do I know which stick is going to do what? So let's take a look at that. So if we go to our function assign, it gives us our list of functions and control. So I'll look at J3. Now what we have here is we have a picture, it's a little hard to see probably on the on the uh, computer, but it's a picture of the radio and it shows every channel with a little label hooked to it so you just touch the one that you want to be hooked to that control. So this is J3 right here. J4 is this way. And all the switches, everything's got a little... Nah, we want to assign it to the VRC. We can assign it to VRC. And uh, that's all you do. And then go back. And you can reverse it right there. You can also do something called high and low, which is kind of nice. Normal would be a proportional channel. In other words, you move it and the, the proportionally follows along. High would be you move it and it goes immediately to high or immediately to low, like a switch. 
So you can um, set that also on many of the channels. Very easy to do with this picture right here. Matter of fact, I, I never even really opened the quick start manual. I just kind of played with it and learned everything within a few minutes on, on how to do that. So that's how you assign, that's how you decide which stick you want and how to assign it to a, a function. So what I want to show is the switch housing has an Allen screw right here on each side. So you remove one screw and this housing opens up and the switches are right there. And you can take them in and out and there's a plug right here and FlySky offers um, additional switches so if you want to change this to a th three position switch that returns to center or if you want to change this one to a three position switch that stays where you put it you just get a switch, plug it in, you don't have to open up the whole case, you only have to remove this one little housing and you can change the switches. Now I don't know if the radio is going to come with any switches um, but they are available and very easy to change so you can kind of adapt the radio to exactly how you want to use it. Well let's take a look at this tray for a few minutes. I've not opened this or even looked at it. And again, kind of a pre-production unit so there's no instructions. Oh my word. That is uh, that is a beautiful piece of work. I don't know how good you can see it, but man, it's got kind of a textured back. These must be the uh, wrist rests. So it looks like this assembles into a couple of layers and you can rest your wrists here so that you have access to the sticks. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing together. I'm going to unpack all the parts and see what I've got. It took me just a second to figure this out. There's two alignment pins that mount in this plate. And then they just slide in and out here. And this knob is the adjuster knob. So what happens, these will mount right here. I'm going to mount it in the bottom set of holes. And then the knob pushes this up to lock the radio in. The radio handle fits up into these notches. Okay, and then the, the slider plate will just hold it in and lock it into place on the tray. So that's how that fits. It's, it's really cool looking. Um, I'll tell you what, hanging out of this thing working my bulldozer, I'm going to look like I know what I'm doing even if I don't. Okay, so uh, this basically just bolts down here with a couple bolts and these frameworks mount like this and mount the wrist the wrist pads. So I'll go ahead and assemble that and that'll pretty much finish up this tray. So here's the finished tray and you can see how this works. You've got, well, first off the radio is locked in on the handle here and the thumb screw holds it tight so it's very solid in the tray. You've got these rests for your wrists, so you can operate the controls, including the rotating controls. Oh, would this be a cool boat radio? Tugboat, you get your bow thruster, rudder, throttles. Oh my word. Construction equipment, it's just going to be amazing. So anyway, there's how the tray fits. And then this, this uh, unit clips in. And this goes, basically, your arms go through here, and this piece rests across your back. And then they snap in on the other side. So it holds it solid, and then this rests up against your tummy. Um, I'll go ahead and put it on and show you what that looks like in operation, but it feels fantastic. So here is the tray in operation with me wearing it. Uh, it's very comfortable. You can see the fly sky plate on the back. This just fits around my arms. 
there's adjustable angles in the front and you can adjust the height up and down. So now my hands naturally fall right to the, the hand rests and it really is a great way to work the radio. It, uh, it stays when you take your hands off so you can uh, walk around with it and it's just a very comfortable position, great for viewing. Uh, I'll do a little close up here of the radio. So here is a little close up of the tray. You can see how solid this is. My hands just naturally ride on these rests. I can operate the rotating sticks just um, very easily, very comfortable. The tray is an excellent way to work this particular radio on construction equipment, trucks, boats, uh, that type of thing. Every control is easy to get to. The tray is super good looking and it, uh, it's easy to put on and off, fits really good. I really like the tray. This is going to be my new go-to radio for trucks and construction equipment and boats. Well, let's hook this thing up to a receiver. So I'm going to go ahead and bind the receiver. And the way you do that with these is there's a little bind button here. And you hold that down while you're powering it up. So we'll power it up with a little battery. And you got to hold it down. Hold it down, Bob. There we go. And the little red light will flash quickly. Turn the power buttons on. Now, I'm assuming when this radio comes out, it'll probably come with a receiver that's already bound. Uh, this was shipped separately, um, and so I'm, I'm just going to go through the binding procedure. So you, you go to um, the menu, you go to Receiver Setup, and bind binding. with... Binding successful. Bind successful. That's all there is to it. And now I've got something plugged in to a stick here. So that's how you bind it. Pretty straightforward. One of the other functions that I'm always using, and I've showed people how to set them up for uh, trucks um, for the Tamiya MFC unit on several different radios, is dual rates. Um, so let's take a look at the dual rates on this. So we're going to go to Rate and Expo, and let's just set up a dual rate and see how hard it is. So J1 is going to be our dual rate. So we have the rate here is 100%. Now, my typical thing will be to set it for 75%. So we just, no, I don't want to, so I just go down here. Whoop, that's pretty fast. 75%. Okay. Now, we want to assign a switch over here on the side. See, there's a, a circle with a red arrow, which means it's turned off. We want to assign a switch, so we go over to our little picture of the transmitter again. We'll pick switch F, which is this switch right here. We'll go back, and now we have 75% and 100%. Just like that. So 100%, 75%. Super easy. You can assign any switch to be your dual rate switch, and it's very easy to change the, uh, the levels, and you can go up and down just as quick as that. So, um, yeah, boy, pretty, pretty darn simple to set up dual rates. This will be a real easy radio to set up for the Tamiya multifunction unit, and I'll print a, uh, it might take me a few weeks, guys, but I will print a programming guide for the Tamiya MFCs so you can use it in the Tamiya trucks and the Tamiya Tanks, which I believe this will be a fantastic radio for both of those. Real life test here. Um, I've got this uh, radio hooked up to my bulldozer now. And uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's fantastic. This is the radio that comes with the bulldozer. It's a Fly Sky radio and it works pretty good, but it only has four mixes and it doesn't have very many switches or controls, so you run out of options really fast. But with this new radio, amazing. So I did a couple quick mixes so I can drive it with one stick, turn it forward, backwards. Um, and I've showed how to do that with the stock radio. It's very easy to set up the mixes. But I have another mix so I can drive it with these sticks. So I can, I can drive it, you know, tank style 
which is great. If I have to operate one track, sometimes it's a little tricky to operate one track with a joystick. So you can just operate one track with this. You can drive it bulldozer style or joystick style. Same radio, no switching, no complicated stuff once you get the mixes set up. Now, later on, I am going to show exactly how to program those mixes in this radio with this bulldozer. So you, you could use it with any tank or any bulldozer excavator um, and be able to um, use multiple sticks to drive it. But that's the advantage of this radio with 20 linear mixes and with all these amazing controls and switches you've just got versatility like I have never seen in a in a radio before. Um, I want to try and set up a quick um, mix and set up on a tugboat and just show you how that might work. So talking about using this on a boat or a ship, um, I just set up a model called tugboat right here. Uh, unfortunately right now you can't change the the uh, icon but I assume that will probably be something coming in a future software update. So what I did was I have channel 1 engine, channel 2 engine, channel 3 rudders, channel 4 bow thruster and you could set this up very similar to the way I set up the bulldozer. So on a twin engine tugboat you could have forward and reverse, left and right with the motors on one single joystick. You could have your rudders here, you could have your bow thruster here and your stern thruster here and then you could have individual control of the motors here if you wanted to do some you know close in port work and you didn't like the joystick. Uh, again very simple to set up I'll do that in a future video but uh, what a great boat or ship radio these um, rotating controls give you that extra feature that you just can't get anywhere else well there you go the Paladin 18 EV uh, a, a radio designed specifically for vehicles for boats for tanks uh, bulldozers excavators trucks construction equipment I am super impressed with this radio I've been around a long time I started and ran a huge hobby store for many years I I was using radios like Heathkit and EK Logic Troll I've gone through Futaba and Spectrum and JR and just every radio you can imagine I've built boats and submarines and trucks and this is the finest ground radio I've ever had my hands on and I am really excited about it um, the hardware is impeccably beautiful. The software is darn good and it probably will get better. This tray is a work of art. I mean it just it fits good, it works good. I like everything about it. There's a couple things that uh, I'm sure they'll they'll work on and improve um, and I don't honestly know what's going to come with it standard. I love that uh, wireless charging base so if, if you get one you might want to think about that. I don't know if the tray is going to be standard or optional, probably optional, but you're going to want the tray. It's really nice. Super cool radio. So normally I put links in the description, uh, but since this radio is not even available yet, I won't have links to start with, but eventually I'll put links in there where you can purchase it. Um, keep an eye on my channel because I'm going to have programming videos on this for like bulldozers and tracked vehicles and tanks, and then for the Tamiya MFC unit for the trucks. So I'll do those um, upcoming pretty soon, and then uh, additional programming um, videos as I can get to it. Also, I'll be uh, featuring it with the, um, the Beer SFR1 system and how to program it with that. So there you go. Uh, fantastic new radio. I am, I am uh, thrilled. Boy, if I, if I don't like something, I'll tell you. <laughs> you guys have seen me do that before. This, I like. This thing is amazing. I uh, highly recommend it, and... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to have a few myself. So there you go. Subscribe to my channel. Check us out on Facebook for Hobby Concepts or for the Tamiya Truck Open Studio. And, uh, and uh, keep an eye on my channel. We'll see you next time. Thank you.